style, which wasn't really too unreasonable because Ick just randomly changed their mind uh, about Ifatup and killed them. So yeah, that happened. In year 200, a massive wildfire started in Russia and made its way into Holy Ivek, burning down many of their villages. At year 210, a new empire was formed as an offshoot of Great Ick, Great Sonic. Year 220, the fires finally subsided in Holy Ivek, and Great Sonic's rebellion was running out of steam, now only having 36 soldiers left for Ick's 320. Evniv also stepped in to quash Great Sonic's rebellion, hoping to claim some of their land for themselves. In a year 230, they were wiped off the continent, and for 10 years, Europe was at peace, until at year 240, they had a large rebellion, Kokugi. Evniv and Ivek also went to war with Great Ick. A lot of Ick citizens also split off from the empire at this time, forming Realm of the Tawopo. Great Ick was now at war with the entirety of Europe. After they were split in two, the Ick Empire fell in just a matter of a few years. In the year 260, Evaniv realized they had expanded just about as far as they could, and if they wanted more land, they would have to claim it themselves. They declared war on... Well, the entire continent. Despite only being one empire, they still had more soldiers than all the other empires combined. Their first target was Tawopo, which they flanked with ships and took their southern colonies by surprise. In year 275, Tawopo had managed to reclaim some of their colonies such as Italy and France and started to actually push into Evaniv's land. Ivek had also been conquered at this time. The number of soldiers on Tawopo and Kokugi's side were starting to drop rapidly though, and soon they dropped below 300 soldiers. In the year 310, Kokugi was destroyed, and Tawopo now had exhausted all their defenses, and there was nothing left for their citizens to do but run for their lives. Year 320, the conflict was resolved, but Tuopo had now been pushed off the mainland onto the islands of Corsica and Sardinia. And yes, I had to look those up because I had no idea what these are called. Just five years later, Evaniv had several rebellions. Realm of the V, Great Eilesh, and Ekif. They paled in comparison to Evaniv, but it was a start. In year 330, another empire was formed. Realm of the Yitta. This was just what the rebellion needed. Evaniv had no choice but to cut their losses and make peace of their rebel empires. But their troubles were far from over, and more land was lost to rebellions. Now having to battle the new empires Yaipov and the Okat. At this time, an alliance was formed between the four original offshoots of Evaniv. Yitta, Ekif, Kif, V, and Ilesh. The new empires also got the same idea, and Yaipov, Okat, and the newest addition, Bileka, also formed an alliance. Evniv did not stand a chance against them now, and their long reign finally came to an end. We had about 20 years of peace, but when there was little land to gain naturally from expansion, it forced war upon the world once again. The Bileka and the Okat dissolved their treaty with Yaipov and attacked them. The Axe of Great Alliance on the other side of Europe also got the same idea, and soon the entire continent was at war with Yaipov. After nine years of war, Yaipov was down to just one colony left. The Seven Nation Army of the World funneled into their borders, and in the year 380, there was no longer any trace of them. And in the year 385, the Axe of Great Alliance was ended, meaning now it was every nation for themselves. Realm of the V seized this opportunity and attacked Essify. And in the year 400, Essify had been kicked off the mainland and now only occupied the United Kingdom. I'm sure they would have rather just died. At this time, Yitta and Ekif declared war on the Bileka. The Bileka were hard believers that the best defense was a great offense, and so they tried to get the drop on Yitta by attacking first. Unfortunately, this meant their whole nation was left completely undefended. Two alliances were formed, one between Ekif and Yitta.